Good afternoon and welcome to the workshop. Every locomotive needs a source of coal and water and that's what we're going to get started on now. That's the H2 Atlantic two and a half inch gauge locomotive. I'm going to be building the tender. Now this like the bogey is going to be a multi-part series. I kind of wanted to set the scene. So if we go over to my uh, drafting desk such as it is, we can see what we're doing. What you can see here is the drawings for the H2's tender. Um, and it consists of quite a few parts. Um, I'm going to ignore the body for the second because the uh, the main concern for me is getting the chassis running. So we've got uh, two uh, laser cut steel chassis sides. We've got uh, a piece of metric um, 20 by 20 steel angle here, and this needs to be machined down to 5 eighths by half inch, um, but that will form the, the, the drag and buffer beams. Um, have some uh, some square rod, it's quarter inch square, uh, and this is going to be for frame stretchers to hold the, uh, the the chassis sides apart. We have six more wheels to machine. I'm going to find a better way of holding those on a mandrel. Ian Turner of um, Gauge 3 and 2.5 and inch society fame has given me some ideas on how to uh, turn these a bit more easily, so I'm going to do that. Uh, and unlike the bogey, this one is actually going to have um, actual axle boxes, uh, which the, uh, the the axles are going to ride in, rather than those integral ones, uh, which means it then also needs horn blocks. So these are some uh, horn block castings. I don't know if they're cosmetic or real. I think they're, I think they're real. Um, yeah, then they've got keeper plates underneath. Um, and so that's going to hold the axle boxes in. Uh, we also uh, have got a casting for a, uh, a water pump because the tender obviously needs to pump water into the, the boiler. And so part of the construction of the tender includes the water pump. Um, there's lots of riveting and a little brazing with this. And as, as we know, I'm not experienced very well with either of those things. Um, but I can get started and I can learn as I go. So my, my first uh, port of call, my first piece of action, I'll clear these away, is going to be to get this machined up uh, to the, the dragon buffer beams here, uh, slotted. Uh, and I'll be using the horizontal mode of the Centec to do that. So that should be quite exciting. Uh, and when that's done, I can then size the frame stretchers because the frame stretchers need to be sized to the width uh, of the slots in the, the, the drag and buffer beams. So then these will all be set. And then in theory, I will have the sides and the ends of the chassis. Uh, and that should hopefully provide a basis for everything else. So hopefully you enjoyed the overview, at least, of the tender chassis and what we're going to be doing over the coming weeks. Uh, I'm certainly pretty excited. Uh, I'm going to start off fairly easy with things I know, but then we're going to get into horizontal milling, brazing and riveting, which is all, uh, all a bit fun and exciting. Um, but also I, I've spent a good deal of time trying to make the workshop a bit more habitable and usable. You see here we've got these. This is a frame. Uh, of a bed that I've repurposed and cut up and screwed together in different ways. Um, and I think this looks really nice and certainly it's a lot nicer to have the uh, the tools accessible uh, just to grab them rather than rummaging around in boxes, which I've been doing. There's a long way to go. I've got my hammers out here and I've got my files up there. Um, but there's behind the camera is, is a lot of dead space. Um, a lot of piles behind the camera in that shelving unit in the corner. Um, and there's a lot more work to do. Uh, but I'll try not to let that interfere too much with uh, bringing out some videos on the Atlantic and the process there. So uh, with that, I'll see you next time.